The click latency difference between a wired and wireless gaming mouse is the same. At least that's what we've been telling ourselves for the past couple of years. But today we're going to see if that's actually true. Modern gaming mice use different sensors, different buttons, and most importantly, different firmware and software to sample that information, including different debounce times. And the real answer is that yes, there is actually a measurable difference in click latency between the top gaming mice out there, especially between the top wireless contenders. In fact, when it comes to mouse latency, maybe there are other factors here that are more important than just whether the mouse is wired or wireless. So really excited to show you guys this testing Let's take a look. So what we're testing here is end-to-end -end latency. That is the time that it takes for a mouse click to actually register as an input on your display. This does mean that we're also including a bunch of other factors in the chain as well. But since those are constant, we'll be able to measure the difference between the changing variable, which is the different gaming mice. Also, since we are measuring latency on a very lightweight desktop app and using a 360 hertz monitor with one of the fastest PCs that you can build today, the rest of the latency in that chain is very minimal as you'll see. So to actually measure latency, we'll be using NVIDIA's latest revision of the LDAT, which is short for Latency Display Analysis Tool. This one actually has a microphone input, which means that instead of relying on a wired connection between the mouse button and the LDAT, as you can see here, we can use an audio input instead. So with the microphone plugged in, the LDAT listens for the mouse click, starts the timer, and then waits for the input to be registered in the software in the form of a flash. Now, if you think that using audio as an input here is an inaccurate and unreliable way of testing, don't worry because I did too. That was until I compared the results between a hardwired connection and the audio input as a trigger. There I found absolutely no difference in the average end-to-end -end latency between using the audio as the trigger versus a direct wired mouse button signal. So direct wire versus audio as the trigger, we get the exact same result. Also, given that the distance between the mouse click and the microphone is only a few millimeters, we're only looking at a few microseconds for that sound to travel that short distance. When you consider that, these results do make sense. Also, some quick testing on polling rates here to see how much of this will impact the following tests. This is the sampling rate of the mouse, so it makes sense that higher polling rates result in lower latency. Most gaming mice top out at 1000 hertz, or one sample every millisecond, but others, like the Final Mouse Ultralight 2, are limited to 500 hertz. So testing with the G305 here, I found about a 1.6 millisecond difference between the 500 and 1000 hertz polling rate. It is a measurable difference, although not a deal breaker at around an 8% increase in end-to-end -end latency. So just keep that in mind out there if you're choosing between mice that are locked at 500 hertz. But here's the graph that we all want to see. What is the true click latency of the top gaming mice out there, including both wired and wireless? I think the first thing that I want to point out here is the fact that there is in fact a measurable difference here. It's not just as simple as they're all the same. If we take a look at the bottom of the stack at 28.7 milliseconds of latency versus the top of the stack at 14.9, that's almost a 14 millisecond difference. So picture that as playing with an additional 14 milliseconds of network lag, for example. The concerning part here is that that's 14 milliseconds at the start of the chain, which will affect how mouse clicks are registered in game, not just how they're displayed. That's very different, for example, to comparing 14 milliseconds of latency on monitors where it's just affecting the display, not the actual registered input in game like this. So to put 14 milliseconds into another perspective, if you play on a 240 hertz gaming monitor, your gunshots will be delayed by a little over three frames. But let's start picking apart the stack here, highlighting the wireless gaming mice in wide and leaving the wired models in blue. There really isn't a correlation between what's better to go with for lower latency. Both have good and average performers. Also, it turns out that Razer's optical switches and their claims about industry leading response times aren't a load of marketing fluff after all. They actually managed to top the chart here with both the Razer Viper Mini and Viper Ultimate. On the same note, this is exactly why a default, out of the box, glorious Model O wireless performs towards the bottom of the stack. So this is due to the Model O wireless having an exceptionally long debounce time out of the box of 10 milliseconds. Debounce is a feature that forces a delayed signal on the mouse to avoid double clicking, something that Razer has managed to get past due to their optical switch design. You can improve the latency result on the Model O wireless though by reducing the debounce setting in their software. And here we can see that that does have a pretty 
significant impact on reducing latency. Even setting it to zero milliseconds, I didn't experience any double clicking in my testing, so I would recommend trying towards those lower end values. So now subbing in that new result for Glorious, we're about one millisecond behind the Logitech G Pro X Superlight that sits in third. In fact, what's really unexpected here is that we actually have wireless mice beating wide when it comes to input latency. So this leads to another question, what happens when you plug in a wireless mouse? Well, as you'd expect, the click latency does improve ever so slightly, but it's a pretty small difference. The wireless connection on the G Pro X Superlight is just 0.3 milliseconds slower compared to having it plugged in, and the Model O wireless was just 0.6 milliseconds slower. So I think we'd all agree having that freedom of wireless far outweighs the benefits of having a half millisecond reduction in click latency. I'll also mention that I am a little bit disappointed in Ponage. Despite giving this mouse an excellent review, this result shows that the software and firmware team can do a lot better. Specifically, the debounce adjustment slider in their software, which I found to do absolutely nothing. I tested both ends of the slider and the default middle, and I got the exact same result every single time. I still rate the mouse pretty highly. I think the shape and customization is quite good, but the software and tuning really is lacking here, which is disappointing to find. So some really interesting results here. And if you're someone who was hesitant to jump to a wireless gaming mouse for fear of increased click latency, and I know there are a lot of you out there, this just shows that that's not something that you have to worry about anymore. In fact, some of the fastest gaming mice in this list were actually wireless. But also with a lot of wireless gaming mice coming out from smaller brands like Ponage, I'd be interested to see what the latency results look like there too. As a disclaimer, I still think that mouse shape, size, weight, and feel are the most important elements defining what the best gaming mouse is for you, but I'm really, really excited to introduce this new element of testing to upcoming gaming mouse reviews. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.